Good day, students. So welcome to part six of the AP Calculus EB on multiple choice review questions for 1998. In this installment, we're going to be going over questions 76 through 80. All right, so let's take a look at question 76. Uh, it says, um, let's see, we need the graph here. All right, and these are the questions that basically uh, do not require, require the calculator. Okay, so this is a calculator section. But most of the problems, you can do some of them without even a calculator, as you'll see us um, doing some few problems. All right, so let's take a look at um, question number uh, 76. So it says, uh, the graph of the function is shown above. Which of the following statements uh, about f is false? Option one, f is continuous at x equals a. So let's examine what's happening at x equals a. If you examine uh, x equals a, let me make a sketch right here, uh, something similar to the function. Um, at x equals a, you have a discontinuity, okay? But something else is happening around that value right there. So let's see, we have a function that looks have a circle and then goes up like that. All right, so at x equals a, you have a discontinuity, but then you have a point right here, okay? So does this take care of this discontinuity? Absolutely not. Had it been this point where we're right in here, then that will fill up um, in the discontinuity, okay? So at x equals a, you have a uh, point or removable discontinuity. So um, a is false because the function is discontinuous at x equals a, so a is false, all right? Let's take a look at b. Uh, f has a relative maximum at x equals a. At x equals a, we have this point right here. Is this point higher than every point in this neighborhood? If you make a neighborhood around this point, is this point the highest? Absolutely. So this point is a relative maximum because relative to the points around it, it's the highest. X equals A is in the domain of F, absolutely. Even though it's discontinuous in this piece of this function, this is the uh, value of X equals A in this function, okay? Because of this point right here, um, we have a point that satisfies X equals A in the domain, all right? So um, option C is also true. Option D, the left and the right hand limits are equal. So the question is, if you're approaching this point from the left, this is x approaches a from the left, and if you're approaching from the right, x approaching a from the right, are you approaching the same point? Absolutely. Even though the point is non-existent, the question is, the limit has to do with where is it approaching? So is it approaching a single point? The answer is yes. So since option D is true, it follows that option E is true. The limit also exists, okay? as long as the right and left hand limits are approaching the same point. All right, let's move on to question 77. Uh, in question 77, uh, it reads, it says, um, let f be the function given by f of x equals 3 e to the 2x, and let d be the function given by g of x equals 6x to the third. As what value of x do the graphs of f and g have parallel tangents? So they have parallel tangents when um, the slope of the tangent line at that point is the same. Okay, so how do you find the slope of the tangent line? It's the derivative at that point, right? So um, f of x and g of x have parallel tangents. Tangents um, when f prime of x is equal to g prime of x. So all we're basically doing here is we're going to Find the derivative of the two functions, set them equal to zero, and solve that equation uh, using a calculator. And now the x value that satisfies that equality will be uh, the point where the ta their tangents are parallel. Okay? So all I need to do first is find f prime of x. Uh, f of x is 3 e to the 2x, so f prime of x is going to be, um, we're going to use 3 times e to the 2x. The derivative of e to the 2x is just e to the 2x. Using the chain rule, the derivative of the power is 2. Okay, the derivative of 2x is 2. So f prime of x is 6e to the 2x. All right? And then g prime of x, the derivative of uh, 6x to the third is uh, 18x squared. All right? So parallel tangents occur where we have uh, 6e to the 2x being equal to 18x squared. Okay, so we have to solve this. So how about we just graph these two functions and see where they intersect? Graph, draw the graphs of their derivatives, okay? So that's what we're going to do. 
All right, I'm going to be making use of a TI-89 calculator. As you can see, it's a pretty cool calculator to use. Um, so the first function is 6 um, e to the 2x. And then the second function is 18x squared. Okay, and then let's graph it. There goes the first function. And there goes the second function. So all we just have to compute is the intersection there, okay? So let's go ahead and calculate that intersection. I'm going to use F5, calculate intersection. <clears throat> 5, first curve, <clears throat> that's the first curve, enter. Second curve, selected enter. The lower bound is a point to the left of the curve. I mean, of the point of intersection, that's a point. So any point to the left will suffice. So that point is good. Enter points to the right is the upper bound. Enter. Negative 3.9064. That's the um, point of intersection or the solution to this e equation. Okay. So this follows that x is equal to um, negative 0.3. Now we have three decimal places, so round it up 391. And that's the answer. Answer for number 77 is uh, option C. Okay. All right. Okay, let's take a look at question um, 28. 28 says the radius of a circle is, is decreasing at a constant rate of 0.1 centimeters per second. In terms of the circumference, what is the rate of change of the area of a circle in square centimeters per second? So basically, there, what, what this formula is telling us is that in the rate of change formula of the area, we can actually write it um, in terms of the circumference. That's pretty cool. Anyway, um, what do we know so far? Uh, the radius is decreasing at a constant rate of 0 0.1 centimeters per second. So change in radius is basically uh, expressed as the r dt. Okay, so the r dt is 0 0.1. All right, when we're differentiating our equation for um, area, we're going to be substituting 0 0.1 into anywhere the r dt shows up in. Okay. All right, so the main formula we're going to be finding the related rates to is the area formula. The area of a circle, um, A, is equal to, uh, what's the formula for area of a circle? Pi r squared, right? Pi r squared. So what we're going to do is we want to find the rate of change of the area. Okay, so the ADT, differentiate with respect to time, is equal to, uh, pi is a constant. The derivative of r squared is 2r the RDT, okay? So um, we know what the RDT is as a constant. Can we express this as a, in terms of C? Well, guess what? The ADT is equal to two pi R, the RDT. Uh, what is C again? C is what? C equals two pi R. So we don't act actually have to do any work here because um, C shows up naturally in the in the derivative of the area formula. Okay, so uh, this is what uh, the ADT is. So what we're going to do is we're going to substitute in the value of C. C is two pi r, so uh, we're going to have the A dt equals two pi r C. And now the R dt. Oh, another point I failed to indicate was that since it's decreasing, there's a sign to it. It's going to be negative. All right, since it's decreasing. So we're going to put in 2 pi r, uh, we're going to replace it with c times the r dt is negative 0 0.1. Okay? All right, now when we simplify that, um, it's going to become the a dt is going to be uh, negative 0 0.1 c. And there goes your final answer, okay? So you can see the answer is uh, option d. All right, let's move on to question number 79. Question 79. Um, 79, we're told that uh, the graphs of derivatives of a function f and g and h are shown. Which of the functions um, f, g, or h have a relative maximum on the open interval a, b? So if you take a look at these graphs, you have to be really careful, okay? These are the graphs of the derivatives, they're not the graphs of the functions, okay? If these were the graphs of the functions, then this has a relative max and relative max here, max, max. But these are the derivatives, okay? So what is the connection between the derivative and the function? If the derivative changes from positive to negative, 
then where the sign change happens, you have a relative max, okay? So, um, uh, which function, which function has um, the derivative switch uh, from um, negative, I mean, from positive to negative, okay? Positive and negative means this was increasing before, and then it starts to decrease. If a function is increasing and starts decreasing, at the point where the sign change happens, you have a relative maximum, okay? So if you take a look at um, the functions that we have, the first one is negative, 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 and then changes to positive. At this sign change, you have a relative mean because it was decreasing and then increasing. And then it stays positive and then negative. So at this point right here, there's a relative maximum. So function f has a relative maximum, okay? So, <clears throat> uh, so for 79, we know that uh, f has a relative max. Now, um, let's look at function g. It's negative and it switches to positive. If it's negative, it's decreasing. And if it's changed to positive, it's increasing. So it has a relative min. And that's the only extrema that it has, a relative min. We need a relative max, so this is no good. And this one is positive all the way since the derivative is positive for the entire domain. That means f is increasing on from a to b, which means it has no extrema whatsoever, neither a max nor a min. So since f has a relative max, that's what we want. Our answer is option A. Okay? So you have to be really careful when you look at the function. You want to ask yourself, is it the function, its derivative, or the second derivative? So please pay attention to the name, the labels that every function is provided um, uh, to you on, on the exam. Okay? All right, let's move on to question number 80. Question 80 says that... Um, the first derivative of a function is given by uh, f prime of x. <clears throat> Let's write that down. Number 80. It's given by f prime of x equals cosine square x over x minus 1 over 5. All right. How many critical values does the function have on the open interval? So uh, what does the derivative tell you about the critical values of a function? Uh, critical values happen when the derivative is zero. Okay, critical values, values occur uh, when uh, f prime of x is zero. Okay, so the question that this function, this the question that is being asked here is how many times does this function intersect the x-axis, and those will be the number of um, critical values that you have. You know, if we focus on 0 to 10, it will tell us the exact answer that we need here. So, um, <clears throat> what we're going to do is use a calculator to sketch this function, and then we're going to count the number of x-intercepts we have between 0 and 10, and that will give us the answer, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and sketch this. So, I'll enter this function in our calculator first. Uh, let's clear that. So, we're going to enter parentheses, cos I mean, uh, parentheses, Cosine x. So that goes that square divided by x minus one over five. Now notice how I enter the cosine squared x. You have to be really careful. You enter cosine first before you square it. Okay, enter. And you have your nice little pretty print there. Now let's uh, graph this function. Graph. Okay, that's a standard window. We want to go from 0 to 10, uh, so I'm going to adjust my window, but how high should I make it or how low? You notice it doesn't really exceed 3. Um, let's do a trace so you can see. When we have x equals 3, oh, it's not too high, really high. Uh, great, enter. Okay, so let's scroll to the left. So let's, we can go as high as 2 or maybe 1. Okay, go, go as, uh, as high as 1. And then when I scroll down, you notice that the lowest point is negative 0.19. So let's go between 1 and negative 1 to, to uh, figure this out. Okay, so I'm going to go to my window. We're told that we're going from 0 to 10. So my minimum x min is 0. My x max is 10. 
And then my y mean is how low do you want the graph to go? Let's go as low as negative one and then as high as one. If we miss, if we're missing out points, it doesn't really matter because we're focusing on where it cuts the x-axis. That's where our attention should be, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and graph this. All right, boom, boom, boom. Okay, excellent job. If you take a look at this, we have an intersect here. We have one, two, wait a minute, one, two, three. So since the graph of derivative cuts the x-axis three times, the derivative is going to be zero at three times, hence you have three critical values for f, okay? So we can clearly see that uh, since we have um, something like this, uh, we're going to have three critical values. So for number 80, let me just sketch the graph for you to see. The graph looks something like this. Uh, <clears throat> it came down, cut one, two, three. It appeared as though it was going to come back up, but it didn't touch, and then it just went down and it came back towards it. It cut um, exactly three times and not more. I'm moving this up a little bit. So within the domain, there were only three intersections. So these are the critical values that count one, two, three. Okay, so we have uh, three critical values and the answer is option B. All right, so there you have it.